In this video, we're going to take a look at file formats and compression. So what is a file format? So a file format is the method of saving data on our computer. So it's the structure of how all the bits and bytes, all that data that makes up a program, makes up a file, should be saved to be read by an application. So you can usually tell what format a file is by the extension. So as you can see in my little picture here, we've got a PNG, a JPEG, and a PNG. And most of the time, once you've been using a computer for you know, a few months or so, you start recognizing uh, file types and then these file extensions tells the computer itself what kind of application or what program needs to open the file so your computer when you double click something or on an app you double click something it will open say a word document open Microsoft Word now if you've got multiple programs that can read a doc, doc file for example maybe you've got open office and Microsoft Word it may ask you which one do you prefer to use just like when you install Google Chrome or Firefox or Opera on your computer your computer will ask you whether or not you want to use Internet Explorer or Edge or to use the browsers you've installed. So that file extension tells the computer what program to open it in. Now if you try and open say a .doc file um, in PowerPoint, because it's not a compatible file type, it won't be able to open it. Now there are ways of getting around things like this and some documents can transfer really well. So for example, there's a sort of the equivalent of a Word document in a Mac is called a .page. If you zip that up as a .zip file and then open that zip file up, you can actually get at all the pictures and all the content as a JPEG. That's sort of a way of getting around some file formats. But the main thing you need to know is the different types of file formats, what they are used for and when you should use them. So image file types. So for images, you'd be using them for either the web or for print. Now for web, you're going to be mainly using things like JPEG because it's got lossy compression. It's used for photos and the small in file size. So a lot of like your Facebook thumbnails will probably be JPEGs. You've got bitmap or .bmp, which is non-compressed. A raster file type that has very large files. Then you've got a PNG, which uses lossless compression and supports transparency. So for like an icon with a transparent background, like these icons, for example, these would be PNGs. Now, if you're going to print something, so think about when you've got coursework or when you've ever needed to create something that may be printed, you should be using, I quite often personally use a PDF. So a portable document, a document format, it supports lossless compression. And the good thing about a PDF is that if you open it on a Mac or you open it up on a Linux PC, eh, sorry, a computer or a PC, it should look the same. The idea is that you've export it to one format and you can print it uh, on whichever machine you want and it keeps that layout the same. You've got EPS which is what quite a lot of graphic designers use so it is from Illustrator usually you export from Illustrator and it's good for vector images like logos and it's mainly from Adobe products and then you've got TIFF which is for uncompressed really high quality raster images so if you're printing a raster image you probably want to use a TIFF. And then you've got some commercial formats you might have seen, like PSD is a Photoshop document, a .ai is Adobe Illustrator, it might be um, a .dpp, it's a Draw Plus project, it might be .po for publisher or .doc for word. Then you need to know about some video file types, and if I'm honest with you, exam wise, the main ones you're going to see is probably MP4, maybe AVI. So MP4 is cross platform, most videos are MP4 usually when you download them off YouTube and things like that. It's compressed, so it's a smaller file size, or can be a smaller file size. You've got MKV, which is sort of more of a modern file format, and you've got AVI, which is a Windows Media file format, which you need to have a plugin or a Windows PC to run. Now there are lots and lots of video file types. There's, um, in fact, there's so many that I'm not going to go through them, but there's quite a lot. And if you are into your videos and you download films and things like that, you might notice that there's lots of different types. And some uh, computers or some TVs, for example, can't actually run some of these file types without plugins and things downloaded. But the sort of go-to that most players will be able to use, most TVs will be able to use, will be MP4. Now for animations, you might have an FLV. So this can be compressed, it allows interaction, it's often used for sort of banner adverts on websites, so usually this is exported from uh, something like Flash usually. Then you might have an animated GIF or animated GIF, 
which has a limited number of colours. It's usually for like short animations. I'm sure you've seen plenty of GIFs online, and they can get quite large in file size if you've got lots of different frames. So lots of different parts, if it's quite a detailed animation. And then you've got SWF, which is good for very small animations. It uses vector graphics, so it's easy to scale. And last but not least, we've got audio. So we've got WAV, WAV, which is usually like if you do a raw recording in something like Audacity, for example, it'll be uncompressed, it'll be a big file size. Um, I remember I was putting a CD, this is years and years ago, because I was actually using CDs. I was putting a CD onto my computer and I didn't, I'd have bend it on to my computer as a WAV and it was really, really big in file size, which is a bit naff. And then you've got um, MP3, which is compressed. Most, like if you've used, downloaded on Spotify, your music on there, it's usually going to be MP3 because it'll be compressed. Um, it's a smaller file size and it's again like MP4, it's universal, it can be used on most devices. And you've got FLAC or FLAC, which is lossless compression. Usually, this is for true sound as it's been recorded, which is going to be larger than MP3, but it's usually not as large as WAV. Well. So compression. Now compression is a process by which we remove or reduce data from a file to save disk space. So it's to make something smaller, so basically we have more space. So we've got lossy or lossless compression. Now lossy compression is where we remove anything that's unnecessary and we reduce the file size that way. So we could take out pixels on a video, pixels on a picture, maybe some high frequency audio that we can't hear, so we can still listen to the music, you can still watch the program, you can still look at the picture. It might not be as high quality as it was before, but it's small now so we can actually download it. So you might have noticed that sometimes if lots of people are on the internet in your house, YouTube's quality goes down or um, Netflix quality goes down a little bit. This is where the website will notice that you've got quite a small um, bandwidth or you know they can notice that you've got problems with the internet. So it reduces the number of pixels down or reduces the amount of data in the sound file so you can still access the media without having to just pause it and wait. So um, my internet at the minute has been terrible so a lot of the videos I've watched on YouTube are in like 480p instead of 1080 but I'd rather be able to see, you know, you can get a good idea even in a 480p video of what's going on whereas um, if you keep compressing it and keep compressing it you might not even be able to tell what's on it. So you can keep using lossy compression until you can't see very much on the screen at all or hear very much, but you can still get access to it. So that's the idea is when you can afford to lose that data, you can. Now, lossless compression. This is where um, we essentially can reorder data so it's smaller and then we reassemble it when we want to view it. So it might be a case of if you've got a text document, you can use thing called and we do it for colours as well called run length encoding and then basically if you notice that say in this example here we've got three H's instead of writing H H H we can write H3 or 3 H and then when the computer decompresses it it notices right there's a number there so there needs to be three H's in total or something like that it might be a case of red pixel red pixel red pixel so it'll put R3 or something like that now it's a lot more detailed than I've explained it but the idea is is that we don't remove anything we just use clever algorithms to make things a little bit more efficient and then we can restore them back to full quality when we decompress. So the idea is we use lossy compression when we can afford to lose quality, so pictures on the internet, streaming music or video, it might be a thumbnail on Facebook, you don't need to be able to zoom in and see you know, um, how many spots someone's got on their face because it's a really small picture and we use lossless compression when we cannot afford to lose quality so a high quality printed page you don't want to be compressing that before you go to print it a text based document if you've written a program or a word document and you take half the words out then you can't understand the sentences so we have to use lossless use that run length encoding to make it smaller that way now it's a bit of a revision task what would be a good idea is to copy this mind map and add some subnotes of each of the potential file types that you may use for each pre-production document. So for example, a mind map, you might you could do that on a Word document, you could do it on a PDF and print it. There's lots of different file types you could use. A risk assessment you probably use Microsoft Word. Um, a visualization diagram you're probably gonna use, I'd probably argue it's gonna be um like 
a Photoshop document and you export that as a JPEG or a PNG. So have a little think about different file types you may use. Think about your coursework, if you do comic strip, if you've done um, RA2 and created a piece of digital art or digital graphic, what file type would you export in for that or which one would you export for that? Have a little think. It's a good way to sort of jog your memory and think about those different file types where they might be used. And now an example exam question of the kind of thing you get. So just like in previous videos, I'll read the question out and then I would suggest you pause it, answer it, and the answers will come on the next page. So we've got Youth has given you a sketch of a new logo. The logo will be used on the website and other documents. The digital version of the logo is to be created in a .png file format. So straight away you should be looking right PNG, it's a logo, so it's definitely going to be an icon slash logo with a transparent background probably. Explain one reason why .png is suitable file format for this image, two marks. Then the website will include other images of the facilities and activities at youth. These images need to be saved for use on the website. Explain one issue that needs to be considered when deciding what format to use for these images and then identify a suitable format other than PNG for these images to be saved. So give the video a pause, answer the question on a bit of paper or on a Word document and I'll go through the answers in a moment. And for the answers, so first question we've got PNG format retains transparency. So you can use it on lots of different backgrounds. So that's what I've said with those icons in my previous slides. They've got a transparent background, so I can use them on lots of different places. Uh, PNGs can be compressed, so they're small in size, so you can download them faster. The whole point of compressing pictures is so your computer can download them. When you go on a website, you're actually downloading those pictures. And it's supported by many web browsers and are copyright free. I'm not too sure why that's really an answer on there. I thought surely if you've copied someone's PNG then it's still going to be um, have copyright issues but unless it means the file type itself because it's an open format anyone can use it then you've got uh, three marks for a suitable response with expansion so um, the file size of the graphic as it will need to be downloaded and if they are too large it will take too long to download or the quality of the graphic needs to be high enough so it will not be blurry and portray a bad view of the site so it looks really blurry and rubbish people might think that it's a bit of a rubbish website and then you got a mark there for saying jpeg or picked or gif now it says do not accept bmp eps psd tiff as are all too large in size not suitable for web use so even though these are file types for images i would say if it says png just go for jpeg you can go for gif if you want entirely up to you but jpegs are probably going to be the most common one and hopefully you understood that, hopefully you understand the different file types, where they're used and you understand what compression is. If you want to look into compression in a lot more detail, you can look at my computer science videos where I go into more detail on that. But in terms of the exam, you just need to know the difference between lossy and lossless and when to use them. So please like, subscribe and I will see you in the next video.